This is amazing. 70s hotel vibe where you walk in and it's like a one o'clock sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. And they're pickled in vinegar for they've been pickled for 12 months. <laughs> what? And this garlic is 25 years old. What? No. No, what? <laughs> Yo, it's Mo and Nina. Hello. <laughs> We're at the Elves Club right now. We're going down to visit a brand new restaurant called the Pangolin and also catch up with our super lovable friend Troy, who is an eccentric madman in the kitchen and he also happens to be their executive chef. He's uh, created a special secret menu for us today. I have no idea what's inside. He won't tell me no matter how much I ask him. So I'm going to leave it up to him tonight. I've heard so much about this place from everybody. The food is supposed to be phenomenal and I can't wait to try it. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> I, I always like hear so much about Troy's food so I can't wait. I'm super, super duper excited. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Hi. Hello. You're looking pretty. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Is yeah. Troy here? Yes, he is around. Fantastic. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, shaka laka laka laka. Boom, shaka laka. Welcome Yo, to the penguin. Right there, bro. <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. I don't everyone. think you're as excited as we are, though. Oh, uh, if you see the smile under here. Let's see it, man. Smile you're, so eyes. you're socially distant. Let's see the <laughs> smile. Nah. <laughs> Are we going to the kitchen? Do you want to come in there and have a look around? Yeah. Yeah? Let's right. do it. I'll show you some other bits on the way. Okay. Let's go up in here. So we've got one uh, dry aging room. So at the moment we've got five duck prosciuttos on the go. Oh my goodness. Wait, we got to get closer to this. <laughs> look at this. Whoa. So that's just all... Bill Tom. Yeah, so these ones are done with a uh, silver side, and I've got some done in the kitchen already that were done with a wagyu. Wow. And so they're the whole ducks that have been boned out, cured, um, set overnight, then washed off, re spiced, wrapped up. They've been in there for two and a half weeks, they've got another two and a half to go. Oh my goodness, look at this, that's so crazy. Are you excited? Man, you're going to be like a, a, a dad to these beautiful <laughs> prosciutto ducks. <laughs> this is just a start. This is, so these will be filled up. Yeah. And this one, this room over here, I'm just waiting for the milk season to start properly. Um, but this is getting all oak and teak, teak shelves, wood shelves. And this is the cheese room. So all the cheese in the restaurant is made in the restaurant. So wow. every cheese you eat tonight is made here. No way! Yeah. <laughs> so this is all going to be going in here. You'll be able to see it. Feta being rolled, the goat's cheese being aged, cheddar's being aged. Um, the only cheese I'm not making is parmesan. That's okay. I don't like yeah. it very much. <laughs> <laughs> so this room... <laughs> this room's designed so there's a big chopping block going in there. And I can come in here, table of eight people, or four people, two people, one person. Come in here, I'll carve meat, slice cheese, okay, uh, bring some nibbles, mm. and you sit here with our massive lazy Susan. Wow! And awesome! Just spin the wheel and enjoy some nibbles. So, this X section here, this is going to be our the Pangolin Deli. So, as we make everything, everything that we make will be available here. All our breads, all our sauces, all our marinades. If you want, you can pop in. No! And, and you'll be able to pick up your marinated chicken, your marinated prawns, you name it, from the kitchen to here to your home. Do you want to show me to wear hair net? I've got them just here. Okay. All good? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on, guys? Here, Nina. Sexy. Safety and hygiene first. <laughs> That's not how you wear a hairnet. I'm getting there. <laughs> You're wearing it like a bee. I got a lot to tuck in. <laughs> there we go. How's that look? 
I think that works. All right. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs> and then this is the 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 further. This is the um. This is the school. The okay. school. Yeah, this is the school. So we have our own little poultry room, vegetable room, the fish tank over there for preparing fish. Wow. Our meat. Um, and then bakery and pastry. Oh, look at this. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Welcome to the pastry section. Yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely beautiful. So this is, um, I mean, the whole area, the whole thing is, you know, it's a creative zone. Um, you know, up there still creative in forms of, you know, actually finishing off cooking stuff. But this is where a lot of the main stuff happens this year. Look, uh, I've just we've purchased our own 3D printer. Uh, what? So I can print molds, uh, so I can make my own chocolate shapes. We can make our own. Um, you, you name it, anything that we dream of, we will design it, print it, and then make molds out of it. So. That's insane, dude. You're crazier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here, this is our, so you've probably all seen this during quarantine and things. These are our vinegars. Um, here we go. This is this oh is a sexy goodness. one. Wow. You know. So What's these are. One? This is a peach. So this is white peach. That's so that's vinegar. That's pickled peach. So it's, no, no. This is the vinegar mother. Oh no way. Yeah. So then these help us reap because it took about six months to make my own vinegar mother. Yeah. And then from that, then I infused it into different ones. So we just keep building on it. For example, look, hold on a second. This is just yeah, like endless, dude. Look at how many pickles they have. It's oh so goodness. crazy. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm in Hogwarts. Look at this. That's so nuts, man. So this is the next. This is the next one. So this is what how we start off vinegars. So basically, we've got some of our fruits, and so this is blueberries and raspberries into an airlock container. We have um, added a little bit of sugar, and then that's fermented. So this has been fermenting for 12 days. Okay. So until all the air pops out, then afterwards, so in the next two days, this will be strained off. And then I'll add a vinegar mother and leave it for six months minimum. Whoa, yeah. man, I've never hard. seen one of these before. Well, basically. Is that your invention or you actually bought that? No, you, no you buy them. So it's airlock so that we're producing the fermentation is so we want okay. we want the gases to release yeah. but we don't want any air into it okay. once we to go add our vinegar mother then we want all the air in it that we can get so then that's where all the really good bacteria that's everywhere in the world go in and help produce our vinegar yeah. so like, what are the ones yeah what's that one there this one so well we just finished date season yeah so uh, when I went to the local farms, or I go for a drive, then I catch up with the. I go. I just go and knock on people's walls, or you know, doors. Yeah. yeah. Walls. <laughs> in out, you know, out in the deserts, it's more like walls. Walls, yeah. So you knock on it and say, "Hey, listen, those dates. I haven't seen them before. What what type are they? Um, you know, I, can I buy some? Yeah. And quite often, you know, here the UAE is such a beautiful country. They go, "Listen here," and they chop off. It, yeah. I ended up at one stage with three big hands or prongs, whole bunches of dates in my living room drying. So I break them down um, and then... keep them attached in So I, yeah, I keep the them bucket. on the thing to ripen them and then I detach them. Okay. Then I put them in jars, okay. airlock, ferment them and then strain them off and then we make a date vinegar. Yeah, so so good. Even like these ripples, you can have a little... Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's the most, so that's, you know, when we say about using local produce, to me this is that. Yeah. yeah. This is not buying vinegar from the supermarket. Yeah. This is stopping that and that's Just here. Buying, yeah, making it as well. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. I love that. What's the oldest thing that you have out of all these vinegars? Um, I have down here. 
Uh, this, this is from a friend in Iran when I was there cooking with them. Yeah. And this garlic's 25 years old. What? No way. No, what? <laughs> okay, you're joking, right? No, no. no. This is 25 years old? What are, okay, but what is it made of? It's what, just garlic of? and vinegar. What? So then I started, so... you just top it up every time? So this one, I, this one's for very, very special occasions. It's like, you know, when I have things. But I've started new ones. So it's basically the garlic's in there. Drop in balsamic, the, I use balsamic vinegar and a malt vinegar. And then you just leave them in there. That There's the whole so thing. Cool. That is absolutely insane. 25 year old garlic vinegar. Well, it's actually now 26 years old, sorry. Oh in, my was, goodness. I was in around a year ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's seven minutes chef on the timer. Seven minutes? Yes, yeah, chef. Okay. And then the, the squid, we'll do that in seven as well? Yes, chef. All right. So up on table 12, then on to the two of them. Okay? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Order in straight up, one more savory beef pangolini. Yes, sir. One more table 15. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I love the lighting in here. It's absolutely magical. I have a few questions for Troy because the name of the restaurant is like super unique, and I'm not too privy on their menu yet. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get Troy to walk us through the entire menu and explain to us the inspiration behind the pangolin. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? Yeah, this is basically what you get when you come. So, um, I'm Troy, this is the pangolin, and this is all about heritage, culture, um, traditions, and memories, all right? And it's not just my memories, it's your memories, it's everybody's memories. So, throughout the menu, there's, there's, there's just loads in one sense, probably too much happening for some people, but luckily with us, we're here to explain it to you so that it becomes a very, very beautiful experience for you. The pangolin, why the pangolin? We love the animal. Um, Serge's wife, Teresa, is from Zimbabwe, and they fell in love with the animal, so did we, and Serge was sitting there one day and said, you know, that's a nice name for the restaurant. Part of the proceeds and the profits from what we make here at the pangolin will be going to the foundation for the conservation of the animal. We're here doing this, but it's for the pangolin, it's for the community. Uh, we're not here for six weeks, we are here for, we want to be here long term. We want to be the, you know, we are welcome to the suburbs of Dubai, and that's where we want to stay. We are here for the families, the friends, and everything. And we're here to do that with you. What have you been cooking up in this kitchen, Troy? What have you been cooking up? We can take you everywhere. So, there's lots of little bits and pieces. We've got our breads, your soups, your salads. If you want to come in with a group of six, eight people, um, and we'll just put, you know, share dishes down in the middle, and you can pick and choose what you want. It's probably a better way to go, because then you're getting to see and taste a lot more. I went for the traditional, some very, very traditional old school sandwiches. I love, you know, that, that, that 70s hotel vibe where you walk in and it's like, I want a clock sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So, you know, there's that kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, That's so good. you can't pass up a good club sandwich, so I think ours is pretty good. I'm pretty proud of it. We have the pastrami sandwich, you know, Cat's Deli. I love it. That big slab of meat. We make all the pastrami here. It's shaved here, made here, cured here, cooked wow. here. Um, and so we do a nice, big, thick sandwich. Boasties. Yeah, this is a made-up Troy word. Um, <laughs> when I grew up, when I was growing up, um, my mum made hamburgers in square loaf bread. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, we didn't have the potato buns. Yeah, that we have throughout the UAE. So basically, it's a toasty, but it's a burger. So I took the B from the burger and the Oasties from the Toasties, and I put it together, and we ended up with the Boasty. Nice. Right? 
So literally these are our hamburgers. But if you're gonna do it, we do it properly. And again, my fascination with, you know, my first job was in a pub in uh, Melbourne. And you go in there and old school pub, so you'd sit there and the boys would have a pint and then they'd order a chicken Kiev. Yeah, so the chicken breast filled with garlic butter, crumbed and deep fried, and they'd have that with their chips. And that was their Friday night meal while they were away from their wives having a beer. <laughs> so, so, so I thought, why not grab that piece of history and put it in a burger you instead? Invite of, everybody to run away from their wives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this, it's fun, and I love you know our beef burger. Yes, it's, it's. I mean, we mince it all here. We get the ratios. It's a beef brisket. Um, we're doing the 70-30. Um, as you can see, I'm not scared about telling you what we do and how we do it. I love that, man. Uh, I love know, that. It's just genuine, organic. It's got to be there. Straight man. from the heart, man. It's fantastic. So we do that, but then inside, I have a fascination for bone marrow. I love bone marrow. To eat it, it's beautiful. So we get that, we cut our own bones, um, and we pop the marrow out, and then we stuff that inside the mince patty. No so you have the marrow, all right? Wow, that sounds amazing. So it's a bit of fun. Paper bag, man. Everybody loves paper bag food. What is it? It's takeaway food we all grew up on. Yeah. yeah. You go, <laughs> you get your backpack at school, and you're heading off, and you leave school, you go to the fish and chip shop, you get one dollar's worth of chips, you tear off the top, sprinkle vinegar, and you head home eating your chips. Yeah, so that's, dude. that's the kind of thing here, you know. You, the Australian dim sim, um, your fish and chips, your chicken wings, um, instead of doing wedges. Um, this section is also about having a bit of fun with takeaway food. So it's about getting, you know, instead of just doing wedges and fries, we do fried mushrooms. Yeah, crumbed, deep fried, beautiful and juicy. We use three different types of mushrooms, so you get three different textures. Uh, I think that's a lot better than just eating a potato chip. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds great to me. <laughs> then we get into this sort of, you know, the bunny chow tradition in South Africa. It's served in a big half loaf of bread. What's the, a bunny chow? So bunny chow is where there's so there's a very large, you know, I think it's like the second largest population of Indian people moved to South Africa. So there's this whole area in the Cape Malay and there's all these spices and foods came through to South Africa and it's become very uh, a prominent part of the culture of the food. Um, so instead of getting a you know, big stale loaf of bread and filling with curry, and you know, it's a fulfilling meal, keep you going. Yeah. So we do these, this is the only time we get the burger buns out and we do them as a nice little individual one. Uh, we have, you know, we have one with, a, so we smoke our own to tofu. So it's a tofu and spiced mushroom. There's a lamb one, and then we do a chicken tikka curry in these buns. No way. <laughs> so, we have crocetti, um, which is a flat rolled disc of pasta. It's hand pressed with a wooden press. Uh, the wooden press I got came from a 75 year old man in Italy that still hand carves them. Wow. And so, you know, each piece, you know that we stood there. Um, traditionally, that press was the like the family, uh, the logo, yeah? Right, right. The coat of arms. So that anywhere you went around in Italy, where you, you knew who made that pasta. It was like, that's that house made it. This house made it. Um, so we'll be working on one that has the Pangolin logo, so that whenever you're, wherever you are in the UAE, or anywhere else, if you come and buy it from the deli, yeah. club, club your way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you'll know that you know you're out for dinner and you go hang on a minute that's the pangolin logo that means that the pangolin made that pasta fantastic so you'll know that there's some being that you know our love and care has gone into that um, spatzily tradition my grandma's from Switzerland so I grew up eating this um, this pasta so I just thought well why not use this pasta to do basically our version of an ali olio um, nice and fresh kids can have it too um, and it, I mean, we shave some biltong on top of it and make, you know, like biltong floss. What? Yeah, you know, you get chicken floss. Yeah, yeah. dude. Biltong so, floss? So I'm Asian, homie. <laughs> <laughs> you got me a floss, man. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, what, biltong floss? Yeah, well, that's like, the, you know, I had lots of travels and time spent in Thailand, so, you know, I love yeah. the flosses. And then the middle section, um, it's, well, this is everything cooked over coals. Yeah? Wow. This is exciting. 70% of the gas has been taken out of the kitchen. We cook on coals, we cook on the top of it, we cook in it. Um, and so it's just a selection of beautiful bits. 
we do the meats, we do the ocean, and we do meatless vegetables. Yeah, there's no vegetarian section, there's no vegan section because it's all there. Yeah. Right? Every section. Um, I don't believe in, yeah, I'm vegetarian so I've got to do this, or I've got to read this part of the menu. Um, or I eat meat so I've only read from this part. Yeah. Um, it's about just, you know, we're all one together. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll just take you on a little journey. We're going to start you off, we're going to do about four, four or five courses and we're going to take you through this whole journey and uh, looking forward to it. Thanks for Hell coming yeah, along. dude. Hell yeah. Well, you got you to got, give me another fist bump for that. Right. And I'm going to go and rock and roll in there. Let's go. And uh, I'll let you uh, leave you with the guys in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Troy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> First dish has just hit the table. They're oysters. These are dibba oysters, right? Yeah. All right, dude. Can you walk us through this dish? Okay. So this was a little. It's a, just a little plate. I love fire roasted oysters. Um, I think more people need to do cooked oysters. Yeah. It takes me back to the, you know, the 80s when there was oysters killed Patrick with bacon and you know bacon oh, and wish dishes sauce on yeah, top. Yeah, 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 yeah. So these are done with. Uh, we make our own butter in house. Yeah. Of course, we make. <laughs> Of course, you make everything in house, man. I think you were born here. <laughs> <laughs> so we make our own butter, then we make our own chili sauce, smoked yeah. chili sauce. Then we mix that together. Um, I get some pineapple, yeah, and we cook that off in there. And so that's the pineapple pulp is okay. inside through the butter. Um, and then so that's put on the oyster, they're barbecued, and then we get some pineapple juice. And we cook it down and we make pineapple molasses. What? So, is that this all the Yeah, all this on the outside. Wow. So I'm trying to show everyone that You know what? I just usually just take an oyster and eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Man. You went to get a pineapple, you went to make molasses. Yeah. <laughs> you know, dude, yeah. This is gonna be crazy, dude. I have never eaten an oyster like this in my yeah. life. Alright, so welcome. So these are cooked, you saw them straight on the fire in a little basket. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the idea is, you know, that I wanna show the world that well not the world, UA that there's more than pomegranate molasses. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's everywhere. So yeah, yeah. you know, but there's and you know, there's a, we have pomegranate molasses on many, but we make it. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So you know, but then I know what's in it. I can control sweetness. I can control tartness. And so basically, this is a little shot, little oyster. Enjoy, man. Here we go, dudes. First meal at the Penguin: Dibba oysters with pineapple molasses. You ready? Yes. Here we go. Shame. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Whoa, dude, that is absolutely insane. Dude, that, are you, remember the butter that he was talking about that he was using? You can definitely like... That pineapple is like yeah. super, super tropical, right? The sweetness is amazing. Oh my goodness, dude. It's and so the amazing. oysters are like so juicy, man. The texture in that is absolutely insane. And I think from the grill that he had, the fire, the smokiness from it. Are we doing another one? Yeah, please. Oh. That's so good. Dude, that is absolutely ridiculously insane. I'm gonna I don't even the last know. You gotta go for it, dude. I ate all the juices. <laughs> <laughs> even with the coriander in there. I love the hint of the coriander too, huh? That sauce is amazing. All right, plate number two and plate number three have just arrived, and I don't know how I'm gonna possibly eat it. They look like works of art. They're absolutely stunning. The colors, the presentation, everything about this makes me not want to eat it, and I probably want to display it in my house. <laughs> but I'm most likely gonna eat it. But just look at look at how beautiful this is right here. This is a shaved beetroot kebab with aged feta, pickled garlic, and blood orange marmalade. Just look at that, I love the skewer, that kebab skewer is absolutely beautiful. And then on this plate right here, dude, this right here is biltong that he makes in-house and you've got some Feta cheese, some nasturtium leaves, which I've never had before, and then you've got orange dressing as well. Let's try this built on a nice small little strip right here. I'm just gonna pick it up. Ooh. Oh. It's 
absolutely beautiful, man. That is amazing. Look at this. Look at the oils on that as well. Mmm. Troy puts a lot of thought into what he does. Um, and I really appreciate stuff like that. You know, he's an artist in the kitchen. I can't wait to try this. Let's go. Nasturtium leaf on feta with orange dressing. That's a flavor I've never ever tried before in my life. It's so subtle, it's so fragrant, so aromatic. And that feta cheese, just so soft. It just kind of melts in your mouth. Everything here works so well. Okay, can you please try the feta with the nasturtium leaf? I know that this is I'm probably gonna, gonna be- I'm gonna scoop up some of the sauce. And this is probably gonna be no way you gotta put a leaf on top of there. Oh, oh bam. <laughs> Pretty is that? Yeah, dude. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh man. Cheese talks to me, really. You got some cheese I can eat. You got cheese I can eat. <laughs> it's time to have this beautiful shaved beetroot kebab right here, and there is only one way I know how to eat a kebab. And that's just to bite it straight off the skewer. Look at that, man. Look at look at the blood orange marmalade there at the bottom. And all the juices from the beetroot. I didn't like beetroot oils growing up, so I went, right, I've got to find a way that I like it. And this is the way you like it? Yeah, raw beetroot, marinated in lemon juice oil like a ceviche. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you did it? Oh. And then, then skewered and then barbecued. Yeah, and with it, all my favorite things, blood oranges, marmalades, dried feathers, and there's also basil flower, basil pods. I can see that on the top, right? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. No, no, the little green ones that look yeah, like yeah, papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So wow. they're the basil, the basil seeds and the pods, the flowers. Yeah. And they're pickled in vinegar for, they've been pickled for 12 months. <laughs> Casually. <laughs> so this has been pickled in vinegar for 12 months, by the way. Just, just so to let just, you, know. you know. You can either dive in or I'd suggest actually just scooping some off with the fork. No. No, alright, get in there. Quick, <laughs> quick. Oh yeah, baby. All in? No! That's so good! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I don't even know what happened in my mouth. I love the crispness of the beaver as well. Yeah. Crunch, smokiness, man, smokiness. acid. Yeah. But then oh you got the texture god. of the, the dried feta cracks in your mouth like you. Hold on a second. Yeah. This is vegan, isn't it? It's no, it's a vegetarian. Oh, it's vegetarian. Yo, vegans, hold your horses, homie. <laughs> Boom! Mm. Mm. <laughs> Let's go ahead and smash the rest of this too, man. I love the fact that you put it on a skewer. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Please walk us through okay. these dishes too. So for this course, this is local kingfish from the fish farm. I can so smell this is, that. This is farmed here, it's the Manchi wow. kingfish. It's flash fired, it's been marinated in um, Mrs. Duckett's. Oh, what? Yeah. Mrs. Duckett's? Mrs. Duckett's smoky barbecue sauce. What? So this is the oldest cookbook I could find from in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Right? And so this cookbook has tales of how to clean your curtains, to how to polish furniture, um, but also all the recipes from all the old ladies, all the what? ladies back in the time, in that, you know, I think it's 1941. What? Yes. And so this recipe is back from then. And so I saw this and discovered it and went, man, I've got to make it. And then I was, this is just, to me, this is awesomeness. This, well, <laughs> that this is amazing. Cool. Yeah. This is history. Yeah. Local history, fire out history, wow. heritage. Um, the pickles, this is how my grandma used to make pickles. Those are all chili pickles on top, aren't they? Uh, so this is chili pickles stuffed with garlic. Wow. Um, and then there's your baby amaranth that you... Oh, yeah, yeah. dude, look at that. You're right, the yeah. is amaranth, isn't it? Yeah. Gorgeous. And so these are grown by another beautiful lady, local supplier. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so the idea is you've got this sweetness from the sauce, this smokiness. Then you've got the fish that's got this, you know, beautiful moorishness. Yeah. Um, it's just flash flood, so there'll be a little bit of just beautiful clear fish in the middle. 
Um, and then you've got these. I just want to eat it like right now. Well, you're you're making... I just want to eat it while you're. Well, no, you... no, no, walk us through this dish. Well, this first, is... I'm gonna commit the that. The chili's for you, man. So <laughs> this one, this one is. Wait, hold on. This is a mango. Mango cheek covered with um, Aleppo chili peppers. Ooh. Dried limes. Like Syrian Aleppo chili yep. peppers. Yep. Wow. And then dried lime. Yeah. And then we got fresh lime. So you're gonna squeeze that on there for me. No I want you. To, I want you to suck straight into this one. But no way. We're going for this right now. Yeah. Squeeze it in. You ready? Right. So your go. lime's been warmed up. Squeeze it all over your mango. Wow, look at that. Yeah. You've got the char, you've got the fire, you've got the heat. This is this is what this is like a version. So this comes from the history of, you know, this is cooking barbecues in the Philippines with my wife. Let's do this. This is a pickled pepper. Look at that. Wow, look at that. This is actually a big pepper. This is gonna blow my face yeah, up. Yeah, come on, man. You're the chili dude. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I eat chilies no, every night. I've watched you series. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Dude. Let's go. Let's do the chili stuff. Let's do it. Chew on it. Mm. Oh, man, I love you so much. That's amazing. Dude, you got sweetness in there. I love the texture. You took the skin off the chili. Yeah. So it's got almost like velvety feel yeah, when it goes in your mouth. Yeah. And then it's got a little bit of garlic inside. Oh, I mean, the crispness of the chili yeah. seeds too. That is absolutely Look, fantastic. You're a freaking madman, dude. And then get in. Oh my God. Oh. Are you going to feed me now too? Yeah. <laughs> You gotta have all those flavors at the same time. Oh, you're right, I do, I do, yeah? I do, I do. I do the I do. chili, the sauce, the that, the smoke, the fish, the fat from the fish. It's all there, oh, man. Oh, man, the acid from that chili just cuts. And then Troy you, can't wait. He needs to feed yeah, me this mango. Yeah, <laughs> this is all, it's, it's, it's your, your finishing combo. Okay, let's go. So you, oh. fish, <laughs> yeah? This is perfect together. I just feel like you should serve this kingfish on top of that mango. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is the thing, it's separate, but more is, um, less is more. That is absolutely yeah? beautiful. One, two, three ingredients. You're oh, mad, man, dude, you're One, a genius. Two. I absolutely oh. love that, and I love that too, but that goes so well with this. I can't even describe how well it goes together. The combination is lethal, man. I absolutely love it. So I had to just make a nice, big old bite for myself. I'm just gonna go ahead and smash this one right down. Yeah, grab some of the kingfish, put it on top. Get some of that Miss Duckett's. <laughs> there we go. A sauce from 1940. What about this? this? Yeah, the amaranth leaf. Yeah, put some amaranth leaf in there too. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go. That pepper is spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Chase it down with the mango. Get the mango. Get the mango. Let's go get the mango. Whoa. This charred mango is going to solve all your problems right now. Will it? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, I need to re- <laughs> mm. I've never had mango like this before. Yeah, neither have I. But how well does it go with the fish, huh? It's amazing. I was ready for dessert. Troy's gone ahead and got some more insane looking dishes in front of us. You want to walk us through it, man? Yeah, man, this is home time. This is home time, so, dude. Nina's that... already excited because of this dish, but I'll let you walk us through what it is. So back in Australia, there was a commercial that ran, right? Okay. And it was about, you know, whether you go home for the lamb roast, yeah? Would yeah. you go out for dinner with Nicole Kidman or Tom Cruise, or would you have stay at home for your mum's lamb roast? I'll stay home with my mum. I'll stay home with my mum, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. This is lamb neck. Oh wow! Right? So we get the whole lamb necks in, we bone them out, we flatten them out so that they're one piece. Yeah. Um, and then we make, we've got a, a beautiful um, red onion and fig, fresh fig relish that we make. Wow. And I spread, we spread that in with some frike. Um, so it's a frike to get a frike, bro. I get a frike. I get a frike. I get so, so, but we do that, um, a little bit of anchovy in it, and then we roll it up, then we roll it up in the vine leaves, 
Um, and then that gets slow cooked braised, no sous vide machine, braised properly, old school, four and a half hours. Um, comes out, re-rolled, and then we cut it. Yeah. And then we put it on the barbecue, finish it with a mustard jus, some fried sage, and some more anchovies. Come on, man, stay home. Stay home with mom. If, if, if that was what was waiting for me at home, I'd never leave my house. <laughs> and then to go with that, uh, you know, mashed potato, but with some green beans and some oh. feta cheese, because feta cheese kicks in the salt. Dude. Yeah. And then, this is, you know, instead of wedges, mushroom chip. King brown mushrooms, yeah. button mushrooms, and oyster mushrooms. Oh. And then, on the side, another mushroom, puccini aioli. No way! <laughs> that is absolutely yeah. insane! Look how creamy this mashed potato is right here. Ooh, some of the aioli right on the top. Right there, dude. That is a bite to remember. All right, let's go. That was an oyster mushroom too. The feta cheese, the feta cheese in that mashed potato is insane. Everything about this works so well. Ooh, this good. It's a mushroom like everywhere you go. And you get the crunchiness from that batter and the stodginess, the comfort of that. You actually feel like you're at home. I feel like I, I would try to kick up my feet and just relax, dude. This is amazing. He's right. It is about memories. It is about memories. That's all I feel when I eat the food here. It's a completely different dining experience. Because it's not like, oh yeah, it's delicious. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's delicious, but it transports you somewhere else entirely. Beautiful. So this is the lamb neck dolma. What? <laughs> 12 hours to make this dish. And it smells absolutely insane. It smells so super rich as well. Man, I just, uh, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. I told Troy that I'm gonna pick it up. He told me it's gonna fall apart. It ain't gonna fall apart, homie. Not if you squeeze it hard enough. <laughs> let's do this sauce beef style. Let's go, let's get a big old bite. How juicy it is! That fine leaf, man, is so like it's crispy too because it's fire roasted. What's going on? This is to start it off. What's happening? No, you're gonna bite. Uh, am I gonna bite it too? Eat, just eat it. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, and he's gonna yeah. eat the whole thing. All right, yeah. okay, let's go. Bite down. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Yes. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's marshmallow wrapped around. Ice cream! Peanut butter! Peanut yeah. butter ice cream! Wow! Dude, that is so crazy! Eat the whole thing! Do it! Boy! Bye! <laughs> this is amazing! Wow, dude, look at this genius right here! <laughs> Can you walk us through the inspiration for something like that? That is such a fun little, like... Uh, chopper chumps! Yeah. yeah! Like chopper chumps! Yeah. 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 It's so crazy! So we're mimicking all the flavors of chopper chumps! That's amazing! And then, you... and then it's a, we're doing it in the meringue so that it's a surprise, so basically it's a chopper chump bomb! Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. So this is... Yeah, chop them in, get into it! Why I'm just it? gonna bite in? Yeah! All right, let's get do all this, that chop top. You remember when you went to the movies? Oh, I went to the movies as a kid, and you get, you go and you go, Mom, can I have a chop top? Yeah, and it was the old school ice cream cone with the thing, and it was all coated, dunked in chocolate. Oh yeah, I do remember and it that. And melted, and you bit into it, it went in your lap everywhere. Yeah, there it is. Really? Cross with the paddle. Oh my, I'm so excited. All right, let's go. This is gonna be emotional. <laughs> oh my God, I defeated him. No, I didn't. Oh, it's See, mm. for the kid in everyone, man, just have an icy bowl. Oh my goodness, dude. Cheers. Cheers. Peppermint ice cream, that is so nice. Mm. That is so fresh. Yeah, dude. That peppermint is so fresh. It really is. It doesn't taste like any peppermint ice cream I've ever had in my life. I can see the bits and pieces there. Yeah, all the chocolate bits, right? 
Yeah, yeah well, I just got, has to cover my, my big head in order for it to focus. <laughs> there you there go. There we go. They're like Absolutely. Pepper, there's peppermint pieces eh, on, on the yeah. crumble part. It's so good. So this is it's, coal? It's all coal. So the what? idea is for it to flip it all around. So, I, so what I do with the chocolate bits, I, do okay. I mix it or? Do you want me to join you on this one? Yes. Yes. Ching -ching. Cheers. <laughs> Here's to the hot chocolate that's not. Oh yeah, so we just, oh you just scoop it up like this? Mm. Oh, dig in, scoop. Get and make your moose. What? That's a tofu, right? That's a tofu chocolate. Mm. That's so crazy. This, this is, is so this, nice. This is the important bit. Yeah, the, the burnt marshmallow here. Yeah, because then it even plays with your senses even more because you think burnt is meant to be hot, but it's not. The it's, whole, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the whole dish should just be called, it's hot, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what I really do love about this place is the spirit that Troy has and that, that positive energy and that super lovable character of his. He's just like a mad scientist. You just want to give a big old hug. <laughs> and just to get to sit down and eat his food like this and just connect with him on a personal level. It's something that's completely, completely different. You know, just to meet the man behind the food. And he's not just a great chef, but he's also a really, really, really great person. And just to see him make his way through the pandemic, finally, you know, you see his aura like glow the moment his kitchen opened up, man. He's just like a happy child skipping down the road. <laughs> and I'm so happy I could be here to see that man and to eat his food. So here we go, dude. This is, well, Nina's final bite and my final bite in this little teacup right here. <laughs> How fun was that? Super fun. Super bubbly, super like flavorful yeah. and innovative. No, we absolutely loved it. What was your favorite dish? The dolomite. Yeah, the, yeah. the do, dolomite? What do you call it? Dolomite? Do, dolomite? Dolomite? I think it's called a dolomite. dolomite. But it's basically that lamb neck dolma. And I even that beetroot kebab. Yeah, the, really the, the shaped beetroot kebab is really yeah. nice. But I have to say, dude, my favorite dish tonight, hands down, has to be among all the other beautiful dishes that I've had tonight has to be that dolma. That dolma is like absolutely insane. It is honestly one of the best things I've ever eaten in my entire life. The whole depth of flavor, the, the, the textures in that, the juices, the fat, the flavors, absolutely ridiculous and I would eat like 17 of them in one go. Are you dripping your ice cream? I need to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, this is us signing out. I'm Mo, this is Nina, this is the Sauce Beast, and we catch you guys on the next one. Peace! Peace! Let us do this final bite, let's go. Oh. <laughs>